I'm Brent Adams. I've waited for years for a people's movement to spark, and once it did, I wanted to be front and center with my camera. For the duration of the camp, there was always someone staffing the info table. Well, there are three ways that people can involve themselves. The first is the simplest, and that's just by showing up, because the goal is to concentrate people in, a, in an area so that it's very noticeable. And, and of course, you know, these are people often homeless or facing economic problems. You, you see poverty on display, it's, it's uh, an unsettling thing. Uh, and people should exercise their critical thinking, you know, when they, when they observe things associated with poverty. All that's drawn together and people have to notice it and they're challenged to make sense of it and, and how to fix it. The second way is that if you show up to these uh, Occupy movements, you can get involved. You, you're guaranteed to have things to do because there are working groups that you can join, present their results at assemblies, and they come up with direct action plans, uh, which are the third thing. Uh, there's, there's a, in my opinion, an unavoidable element of confrontation in any of this. If it were to have any impact at all and actually do something to change the world, there's inevitably going to be an element of confrontation with authority, state authority specifically, and police. The third uh, aspect, uh, and the one that I, I kind of signed on for last night actually, is protecting infrastructure from police attacks. Uh, and in my specific case, uh, that meant uh, deciding that I'd take direct political action for the first time in my life and I'd actually attach a U-lock to my neck and join it to a bar of uh, our buckyball dome because I believe that strongly that our First Amendment rights are being trampled on and I, I believe that strongly that the ethical repercussions of what this movement has to offer the earth are immeasurably more important than uh, than the issues that the city wants to draw attention to or that a lot of press outlets want to draw attention to. Those are immeasurably teenier, and they can all be worked on. So, so I, I, any point of view that says that hygiene, uh, quarrels, things like that are unfixable or make the movement look bad is, is just propaganda. This direct action is something I hadn't taken part in before, and it made me a little bit nervous, have, you know, the idea of having a U-bar around my neck, but it's something I'm willing to do because I just believe in this that much. I, I've been on the fence about it. I thought, you know, maybe it caused me a lot of anxiety, but then I thought, you know, all the people that I believe in, my true heroes, uh, they all would have done it. They're all uh, people that knew how to stand up for something, and they didn't just support the people that stood up for something, they were the actual people that did it. So that's, that's what I just had told myself, and uh, I uh, kind of kicked my own butt and just said, you know what, you know, that's, that's who you are. Uh, in the worst case, you know, I get hurt or something, it's still, you know, it would be like one of the most important moments of my life. In my opinion, it's, yeah, this is just an unstoppable movement. Um, there, uh, there can be short-term conflicts within camps. There can be uh, all sorts of police brutality and things like that that are issues. There, there are a number of issues, but I think those are, are uh, not going to stop the movement, however unpleasant they can be. I think that there's been a lot of police activity lately, which is deliberately calculated to make people lose sleep uh, and to disorient them psychologically and cause division. And I think that it's, 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 it's succeeded to an extent, but that's about the best weapon that police have. Uh, ultimately, they don't have a better long-term plan that I could even think of. I don't think a, the smartest person on earth could really think of what the police can do better uh, when they run out of funds for arresting people, peacefully protesting. And now I'm, I'm probably, either today or tomorrow, I'll be part of a direct action to try to save the dome. Following a week of early morning raids, the occupiers expected Sheriff's Department to come and try to destroy their dome. Many had committed to protecting it.
It was brave and audacious building a large metal frame dome at the courthouse. It's indicative of the power of the Occupy movement at that point and how much community support there was at the time that the Sheriff's Department was powerless to remove it. But word had gone out that they were coming for it. You can see one of the many u in this shot. The dome had anchored the occupation in plain view of thousands of honking motorists a day. It housed a library, a communications hub, and was the focal point of the activists' work. They had begun to identify with it as much as they did the camp in the park around the corner. It had kept them warm during the bitter cold nights and dry when it rained. A source of constantly flowing coffee-fueled all-night conversations about the revolution. It was a point of their pride. You gotta understand it. Well, I mean, don't go. Gotcha. And we made a plan. We actually had a special general assembly just to make a plan for the dome. To change yourself to it? No comment, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's, that was off the record in the background. But, uh, but yes, it would be exciting if they do try to take this apart. Yeah, it'll, yeah. Be worth, it'll be worth you being here. And I'll call you, even if, even if I'm attached to it, I'll call you. We have no historical precedent for where we are right now. Um, this is unlike any movement, at least in my lifetime. Uh, there is no analog to it. Um, so we're in uncharted waters, and so I guess the only thing that I have to, 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 to judge on as, as far as how we're doing is, is the police suppression, and that's been pretty bad. I, uh, I'd have to say that we're in a very, very tense moment. We're in, a, we're in a moment in history where, as I like to put it, we're involved in the largest game of chicken in history. Who's going to blink first? Occupy the U.S. government. Occupy Santa Cruz County. Occupy the city government. So it's it's who's going to blink first. There was a honeymoon period when we first occupied where uh, we got to march around a lot. We got to do a lot of activism. We got to do a lot of networking. and All that stuff is still good. I mean, it's, it's, it was good work. It was a, a good start to what we wanted to do with that public space. But then they attacked us, and it became all about us holding that public space. And it's, a, it's a, obviously... You know, the, there's a test for the movement. Do we get past this? Do we survive this? And it's also a test for the government because uh, the alternative might be that they don't survive this. So uh, it's a head-on collision. It's a weird thing, and it's just never been like this. Around the corner from the dome, camp in the park was facing the end of a permit they'd never asked for and were bracing for a raid by the police department. It's coming to shove and it's coming fucking soon. Tomorrow, the next day. Uh, I've been very moved, very moved. Uh, way more than I do. You have more experience with this, but if you give them an inch, they're going to take a fucking mile. If you pack up and move and you go back to the levee or wherever it is that you're staying for, they're just going to come back and tell you to move from that place again and they're going to keep doing it again and again and again and again and again and they're never going to fucking stop. Together, we are strong. Together, we have a voice. And we can make that voice fucking heard by standing together. I would like to encourage um, folks to consolidate tents closer together. Um, get closer to this teepee as close as possible. This area right here is a, is a wide open spot for the police to walk in and divide the camp. It is, it's going to make it easy to take this part down exactly. and then focus on this part. If it's not divided like this, it makes it a lot harder on them. We are intimidating. We are intimidating to these motherfuckers. But if we are all together, we're a lot more intimidating. Uh, I would also like to suggest but I want you to talk about it amongst each other, to put all of the belongings inside the TV and then surround the TV. And I like what Gary was saying, use non-violent um, disobedience, go limp, don't talk to them, just stand and let them, let them try to figure it out. They're gonna be confused, they're gonna be scared, they might get violent, they might arrest you. This is a risk that you will take. This camp had lasted nearly two months and was the first steady home more than 100 folks had had in a long time. The positive effects were evident on a community normally hiding in the woods or along the river or downtown trying to evade a police roust and ticketing. Despite various problems, there was a feeling of community and safety. It had become home. We 
why a lot of these protesters say they're going to be up all night. They're expecting an early morning raid sometime between midnight and 5 in the morning. Dan? <laughs> Those were tense nights at the Dome and in the camp as everyone expected separate raids from both SCPD and the Sheriff's Department. Folks suffered through fitful sleeps waking at every noise. Several activists had committed to defend the Dome and others were going to support them. It seemed like an eternal moment and then something did stir. A man experienced a mysterious yet painful groin injury and just before dawn on the other side of the county building. What's your name? My name is Austin Paul. I caught you guys to be a camper in my car. Police brutality. Huh? I've already done license plate numbers. The activists were wound up with anticipation of waiting a sheriff's raid that never came. During an early morning patrol, activists had been too close to a deputy's car and he attacked them. They were arrested and charged with vehicle tampering. Get the light out of my face. He hit the camp for no reason. He boom, freaking puts him up against the car and hits him with his shoulder in the, in the head. Outside the head. The next morning, officers put hoods over the meters as county workers said they were making room for an impending raid. Earlier, two Occupy Santa Cruz members were arrested for reportedly tampering with sheriff deputies' personal cars and trying to obtain personal information. Occupy Santa Cruz says the pair were simply keeping an eye out for potential police action against the camp. The officer took his arm like this and hit the kid upside the head. Um, we'll do a thorough investigation not only from a criminal aspect, but from our office doing an administrative investigation as well. And late this afternoon, police placed no parking hoods over parking meters along Water Street where Occupy Santa Cruz has set up. It's a move to prevent people from sleeping in their cars on the street. But no investigation was ever done, and officers refused to take statements from those present. The next night had a much different vibe, despite fears of a raid. I said, yeah, we got the rhythm, we got to be good, clear. I had a Twitter that it does another media thing. Yeah, man, I tell you, I could predict. Some would say that means that a raid is eminent. I'm not sure, like a lyrical in media. Gotta hit it down, cause they like to tell the media. When they come on just a little bit, yo, I'm letting up. They arrive like 20 minutes early just to set up. But I'm not sure if it's really set up. All I'm saying, you're right, not the music never lets up. And I'm like, yeah, you can't stop me. I guess it's the right time to go grab some coffee real quick. Jet back, just like no jet lag. Got to hit it, yeah, sometimes my pants sack. Doesn't mean I think I'm better than anyone. But it doesn't mean I'll bow down to the barrel of a gun we got to. How to hit it, cause you know the piece is resting me up a little bit the soul because you know I'm chasing destiny. Yeah, I could tell you cause you know I love the vibe. It's cold as fuck, but I feel so alive. So uh, I fuck it with the breath from my lung. And we hit like Liberty Bell. Always fucking wrong. Freedom song still sung. Like I take with this, we get just a kick and trying to chase a little bit of bliss of the freedom. That we're chasing is the freedom. They ain't into the freedom that we're chasing is the freedom that they ain't erasing like that freedom that we're all chasing is the freedom that they ain't erasing said the freedom that we're all chasing is a freedom song that they ain't erasing said, mm -hmm. no they ain't erasing said oh, no. hey how about that u.s mail support Watching Occuvision, 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 TV for the 99%. Oh, it's a freedom that we find. Oh, it's a freedom that we chase. It's a freedom that we find. Oh, it's a freedom that we chase. It's a freedom.
The street party went deep into the morning as three TV trucks waited. It was a revelation because anywhere else in the city, so much noise would have surely invited a neighbor complaint. But the only neighbor here was the jail across the street. Neither the dome nor the camp were raided that week. But officers were watching from down the street. They seemed a little skittish. <laughs> 